In our health alert tonight, we're learning that a 10 year old girl who tragically died on a water slide suffered from an undiagnosed heart condition. Doctors say London Eisenbeis went into cardiac arrest while riding the Superloop speed slide at Center Splash Village in Frankenmuth. And London's family says she had wanted to ride that ride for two years, and when she finally met the height requirement last February, she got on. But her family didn't know she was suffering from a condition called Long QT Syndrome. The excitement of the ride made her heart rate spike there, and that's what caused her to go into cardiac arrest. It's tragic stories like these that many parents wonder if their own children could have long QT syndrome. Which is why we brought in our chief yeah. health editor, Dr. Parthenani, to tell us more about it and possible symptoms to look for. Doc? So on my condolences, first of all, to the Eisenbeis family. Losing a loved one as a dad, I know, especially a child, is really beyond heart-wrenching. Now, long QT syndrome is considered a rare condition. A person may inherit this condition or develop it at some point in their life. Now, what happens is that the heart actually beats in a fast and chaotic rhythm, and this is due to a malfunction of the electrical circuits of the heart, which causes what? The blood to rapidly slow or completely stop pumping. Often, the experience of extreme emotions such as excitement or fear can really trigger the onset of it. And warning signs of this condition can include this, sudden fainting spells, seizures, or a child mentioning some changes in their heartbeat. However, guess what? It's quite possible to have no symptoms at all, just like in the case of London Eisenbites, who was a healthy child and an active child until that terrible day. Just frightening, Dr. Nandy. I mean, how can you find out if your child has this or not? So Glenda, if your child has any of the symptoms that I mentioned, then be sure to see your doctor. If the doctor suspects that your child has long QT syndrome, then there are tests to diagnose the condition, like an in-office ECG or EKG or a portable Holter monitor, and that records your heart activity across an entire day. Also, you can have a non-exercise stress test, which can be done. And for those with suspected inherited cases of this condition, there's genetic testing that could also provide results. Now, Doctor, London's parents are now strong advocates for raising awareness about defibrillators. Can sudden death be prevented with, with one of those? It's an important point, Alan. So using an on-site defibrillator can actually help to restore a regular heartbeat long enough to actually prevent oxygen deprivation. And most of you likely know that oxygen deprivation is what leads to brain damage. So using a defibrillator could definitely help you buy precious time so that the person can get to a hospital and receive the necessary treatment. Now, if you've been diagnosed with long QT syndrome, there are several medications that can also help to minimize the risk of a dangerous, irregular heartbeat. And for some kids, you can actually put a small defibrillator that can be implanted under their skin to reset the heart back to its normal rhythm. Really important stuff. I've had patients that have had this problem, so I'm glad we're bringing light to it so you can talk to your doctor and possibly prevent a tragedy like we saw with London. All right, Dr. Nandy, thank you. My pleasure. If you have a question or a health concern for the good doctor, you can email him at Dr. Nandy at AskDrNandy.com or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. Now let's check in with Chief Meteorologist.